like many people, I have fond memories of my days at camp, both as a camper and as a leader, and I attribute much of my spiritual growth to those times and to many of the friendships uh, that I still have are uh, as a result of, of going to camp. So it is uh, a thing that is close to my heart and it's something that I have benefited from immensely down through the years. My first camp on my free church camp, Odyssey, was uh, in a place called Moniave at an old private school. And that was a real uh, fantastic week uh, when I was introduced to um, men, uh, young men who loved Jesus and who were willing to speak about that with us young uh, early teens. And it was, a, it was a really interesting experience because you had uh, the camp Aji at that time. And he wore a hat that was perhaps would have been more at home at the bowling green. I'm not sure if he's going to wear it in the Free North or not, but perhaps the folks there could ask him. Um, and the camp was really fun. We did a variety of, exp of uh, activities and a lasting memory for me would have been seeing uh, one Roddy Barlas McRae sprinting down the large grassy field in front of the school chasing somebody who had been hanging about in the woods and he was wearing the shortest, tightest, most luminous yellow shorts that I've ever seen. In fact, I think perhaps I'm still recovering from that image trying to get it out of my, my head. But that was my first camp. The, the following year I went with friends to Arran with Callum McLennan. That was a really varied and mixed camp as well. And, uh, we were at the stage of being sarcastic and irritating uh, teenagers, so I'm sure many people there probably have not so fond memories of us. Nevertheless, we were shown grace and we were shown uh, the gospel. We were uh, pointed to Jesus. The following year, we went to uh, Whithaw with Derek and Katrina Lamont. That was the year that Christine Kennedy slammed my fingers in the car door. Um, <laughs> Another great week of, of fun and that was the thing about camp was that, you know, there was that solemn element where the gospel was shared with you by dorm leaders in dorm discussion at the main talks in the evening, even through the day as you interacted with those who were leading the camps and um, it was just great fun, you know, the crack was good, uh, the message was clear, Christianity was attractive because it, was, it wasn't something stuffy and old, it wasn't something archaic or something uh, just through the dust of time, but it was something that was real, that was appreciated, that was lived uh, by the leaders who were there. Following Whithall, like many, it became time to go to Oswestry. And I went to us Westry a couple of times at least, I think, and we had, again, just a lot of fun. Um, and it was around about the time that, of my second trip to us Westry that I actually came to, to profess faith uh, in Jesus. And um, really, I'm so grateful to the leaders of all of these camps, um, the, the dorm discussions that were had, the, the patience that was exercised by many of the leaders, and uh, very thankful for the friendships, many of which I still have uh, to this day. Then it was time to move on to be a leader. Well, anybody that knows Ian McCaskill knows that he has the innate ability to be able to get people to do things, perhaps that they wouldn't necessarily otherwise have done. I met Ian McCaskill the weekend that I joined the Free Church, the, week the weekend that I became a member in Smith and Culloden. Free Church in Inverness and uh, McCaskill was there as the visiting preacher that weekend and afterwards he was talking to myself and my good friend Andy Pearson and uh, he asked if we would be interested in helping lead a, a camp that he was doing in North Uist. Now North Uist is the place of my father's birth so a place that was well known to me and uh, a place that I enjoyed going and so of course I jumped at the opportunity to go and to be a leader at the North Uist camp. So I started at the North Uist camp in its second year. It had had its first outing in, in 1998 and I went along then uh, as a leader for the first time in July 1999 where I met some people whom uh, I now have the privilege to call friends. And uh, from 99, 1999 until 2016, 
uh, I was a leader at the North US camp in various guises uh, as uh, one of the multitude of leaders, as the main leader, as the joint leader, as the cook, um, as just about anything. And uh, it became a camp that was very special to me um, and to others. It was small uh, and I think that was one of the great strengths of the camp in North Uist. Um, the activities that we were able to do were second to none. They were really world class with Neil Johnson and his team of helpers at the Uist Outdoor Centre. Um, some of the activities that our kids at, at camp got to do really uh, you wouldn't get to do in many other places and certainly not with the backdrop of the beauty uh, of North Uist and its uh, beautiful white sandy beaches and Maher on the west side. So over those number of years, I think up until 2010 we did camp once a year and then from 2010 till 2016 we did two camps every summer back to back. Uh, sometimes leading one week and cooking the next or sometimes just leading uh, both weeks and a great privilege and many young folk, great young people, we, had, we were so privileged, uh, we had such good fun and I think one of the great strengths of the North US camp was uh, the group of leaders who were together and I think if young people uh, see that we as old folk, not that we necessarily class ourselves in that manner but that older people who love Jesus can have a good time together, good clean fun, as they say. I, I think that's a great asset and a great uh, benefit of the camps is for young people to see older folk who are able to have good fun, who are uh, able to enjoy one another's company um, and have a good time together whilst worshipping Jesus. And of course, the beauty of camp was that because it was a small and safe environment, um, people could feel totally comfortable. Um, Bob Ackroyd particularly, I mean, you knew that he was comfortable because he would wear the most outrageous outfits, uh, particularly sunglasses, um, often uh, looking very like celebrities, as you can see in uh, this picture. Now being serious again for a moment, the only reason that I can get away with that uh, is because Bob and I have a great friendship and I'm very thankful for Bob and for his friendship that has come about uh, through camp. I mean it's it's a really a friendship that is important to me and I thank God for. And that's camp isn't it? That sums it up. It, it really enriches your life. Uh, whether you've been a camper or whether you've been a leader, whether you've been both, whether you've been a cook or a helper or a driver, uh, camp is a fantastic thing and it is so important in the lives of young people. It is formative in many ways in terms of our faith. And so I, for one, give thanks for the work of the Free Church Youth Camps and trust that it will go on for many years to come. Do please remember um, Kirsten in your prayers. It is a job that is difficult logistically. Um, it's a real challenge. We give thanks for Laura who did it for many years and for Mary McIntosh before that and, and those beyond but that's as far back as my experience goes. Um, camp is fantastic. Support camp. Pray for camp. Remember our young people. Delight in Jesus and have fun.